Hi, everyone. Bob Poole here. I'm here today with husband and wife, Beverly and Tim Walden from Lexington, Kentucky. Tim and Bev are both internationally recognized portrait photographers. They both hold Master of Photography degrees, among other things, and they've received the highest awards given to their profession. They've also educated thousands of photographers over the years, including me. I met them years ago when I spent a week with them at their Walden University. I enjoyed it so much I went back a couple of years later for another week. Their website says, we hope to leave everyone we meet better than we found them. And I can tell you that in my experience, everyone they meet is better for having spent time in their company. So welcome to the Water Cooler Hangout, Tim and Bev. Thanks so Thank much. You. We're glad to be here. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to be able to talk to you because it's been a while. Yeah, it's been too long, actually, and I'm glad we get to chat. We miss you. Come back again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to. So, so tell me something. How did you get started in this business, and, and, you know, when did you start? Well, you know, I started at 12 years old, and uh, Beverly married into it. I, uh, My father, who passed away a num- number of years ago, about six years ago, uh, was a wonderful photographer and mentor, and he was uh, paralyzed and in a wheelchair uh, uh, most of my life, uh, ever since I was about six years old, and I remember uh, being in his dark room, you know, with the smell of those chemicals. <laughs> I'm probably the only one that enjoyed that. I always say if they made a candle that smelled like, you know, those chemicals, I'd be the only guy to buy it. But <laughs> but I remember being in that dark room and uh, listening to his wisdom and I and uh, watching uh, his his way of. Uh, uh, portraying people, his love for the industry and his passion, and um, and his tenacity. You know, I mean, from a wheelchair, paralyzed from just under his arms down, did a thousand weddings, traveled the world, and thought, and I thought, man, if you can love something this much, there must be something to it. And and so it was with that uh, as a child watching that that uh, drove me to to find out about what made him so passionate, and I and I found out. And then I yeah. met Tim in high school. Yeah. Uh, we were in the same homeroom, and um, we kind of clicked, I guess. And I remember, like, one of our first dates, he took me to a photography show, and I'm like, yeah. what is this all about? Yes, yeah, you're still with me. Go for that. Huh? <laughs> uh, so we, we together, um, our passion grew in photography and yeah. um, made a lot of life decisions very early to... Uh, suffer a little for the cause and uh, bought Tim's dad out when we didn't really have the money to do it. We pretty much starved half the time. Thank goodness for your grandma. Yeah. We would call her and say, hey, we're coming over. <laughs> What's for do, dinner? do you have anything for dinner? <laughs> and, you know, and uh, so our family supported us. And, uh, you know, it's like the uh, country music stars that, say, you know, that people say about them, oh, you're an overnight success, and they say, yeah, it took 20 years yeah. to be an overnight success. We've been at it a long it. time. We've paid our dues and, and yeah. uh, haven't regretted any decision. Well, that's fantastic. I, I've heard the story before about your dad, Tim, and that's amazing that he spent his whole career in a wheelchair for the most part. And, and not not only uh, was able to make a living, but thrived. Yes, uh, yes. A great story. Yeah, yeah. It, it drove him to do great things, you know, and overcome a lot of obstacles, his passion for his, his profession. So how did you guys evolve? I know you, you say you started off, I, I guess, like most photographers, doing everything, right? You did weddings and portraits, and, and did you actually do commercial kind of things, too? Yeah, are you kidding? I'd do anything and everything for him. And uh, it wasn't until the later years that we learned that that truly is a formula for disaster. I, uh, my father, as wonderful as he was as a photographer, uh, his his marketing skills and so were probably not his strength because he he was paralyzed when he was with the government in a in a position where he then became uh, drew uh, a disability. And so his object with photography was purely therapy and passion, but he didn't have to and actually couldn't make a lot of money without losing his disability. So I fell in love with photography and his passion, but when we took over, we had to change our business model drastically because it wasn't a business model uh, that would lend itself to true success. Not, Not in our scenario, in my dad's it did because he didn't need the money. But for us to succeed, we had to make major changes. 
So were you able to figure this out on your own, or did you get some advice from some other people? Well, you know, I, I don't want to, certainly wouldn't want to take the credit, uh, that, you know, on our own, but I, I must say that Bev and I, the majority of it was, uh, was, yeah, the school of hard knocks. I, I mean, I know that maybe sounds like what you're supposed to say, but it's a honest to goodness truth. We, uh, we, it, it was, you know, out of absolute desperation, uh, that, uh, we felt like our business was not going to survive decades ago and it was in a room uh sitting in a room where i said you know what if i'm going to go down i'm going to go down doing what i love and i began to do things that i didn't know i was doing things like carving a niche defining myself i went back and to where my passion was it was you know everybody was shooting color film then i'm like you know i'm gonna go back to the dark room i'm gonna do fine art black and white um it's gonna have strong emotional appeal and uh, if I go down, I don't want to remember photography the way I feel about it right now. And uh, and I set a course to change that, Bob. And, and you know, uh, we held on. And three years later, my accountant uh, said, Tim, he said, I don't think we've ever used this word before, but you're turning a profit. <laughs> I'd never heard that word. I had to look it up in the dictionary. What does that mean? <laughs> but but the reality was we began to set a course to carve, carve this niche out and to to create gaps between us and other people, and we didn't honestly know we were doing it, but in hindsight, at least if I'm if I have any great skill, I can look back and evaluate what I did. And uh, Bev and I made decisions that we made for different reasons, but brought uh, the right results. And today, we're living um, those decisions, celebrating them, and now trying to continue to build on them all the time. The things that uh, things we were forced to make back then. And it really um, has been confirmed over and over, although at the time we didn't really know we were taking huge risks, uh, but it was that or, you know, yeah. or go away. Um, and since then, you know, we've educated ourselves, and, and every book that I've read supports what we did. You know, business classes that we've since uh, attended confirm what we did. And uh, so we're we're thrilled that you know what we did was the was the right course. And, and you know what's funny, Bob, is we're teaching so much as you mentioned in the beginning. We're teaching a lot, and in this today's environment, people are saying, "Teach us how to succeed." And we're standing up with some some really important and well educated people, but they've learned it in school, and we've we've learned it in practice. But the message is the same. Yes. And uh, and we're out sharing it with people who are are facing today what we faced back then, and they're facing a soft economy. Everybody's having challenges. So sure. So, but some of these realities are hardcore foundational principles that we live by, and um, we're thankful that we went through that tough time, and, and they do work um, even for us today. Well, you know, I was going to ask you what to share some of those principles or, or tell us what the greatest risk uh, decision you took. Well, I think uh, one of the greatest challenges for us was to, uh, to do less. I think wisdom today <laughs> yeah. is, in, is in knowing what not to do. I mean, I, I think for the first time in our industry, and, and this is the way we share our classes. Wisdom is in knowing what not to do because there's too many choices. You go to a trade show, you, you go out and meet photographers, and everybody, oh, I do this and I do this and I do that. But any great artist or any great uh, successful person is known for something. And the way you have to succeed today, in, in our opinion, is you have to define yourself so that people recognize you, connect with the right people. Everybody thinks, you know, there's an old saying, the customer's always right, but there's a new saying, and that is not everyone's your customer. And truly great, successful people connect with the right people that are passionate for what they do and can see the definition of what they do as it, as it contrasts other people. And, and we tell photographers, create gaps between you and others. Do less. Less is more. Uh, be okay with the fact that as you define who you are, and this was a big step for us, you will drive people to places. You'll drive them away, and you'll drive them to you. <laughs> but the ones you drive to you will come. They'll drive as far as they need to drive, and they'll pay what they need to pay because they recognize your art. It's defined enough that they want what you do. They buy that artist. So that was a really hard step because my dad was all things to all people, and when you do that, Bob, people shop 
on two things, price and location. And we can't survive in that. And so in today's market, uh, somebody, you know, the people that rise to the top, true to their passion, and they define their art, you're going to find some people that say, I don't like that. But you're also going to find the ones that do saying, I love that, because they see the de- definitive qualities, and then they invest in it. And that's how we've succeeded in, in a nutshell, and, I, and that is a nutshell. But in a nutshell, that's how we've done it, and we've been okay with being who we are and messaging that consistently in the public. And, uh, and, and it's, it's working today uh, in this mass market where everybody's doing everything again. And also, I would add that every time we have taken a step out and taken a risk, there was nobody to ask. Yeah. We were like, who could we ask? Who's done this? We would look through every name that we knew. Let's get some advice. And then we'd look at each other and go, there's nobody to ask because we don't know anybody that's done this. Right. In, the, in the world of color photography, who's taken a step and done portraits in black and white, and then when everything switched to digital, it was like, who's printed black and white digitally? Who can we get some help from? And basically, we ended up being a beta testing site for, you know, a lot of different uh, fine art papers and stuff, because we were the ones that were stepping out and kind of taking the lead on some of these things. And and fortunately, Tim is a, a whole pillar of wisdom. Oh, stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I think experience, our experience uh, has, has given us wisdom that, you know, a lot of the newcomers just don't have that depth to plumb and find the answers. And, and we just would look at each other and go, this is what we feel is right. Um, you know, let's just take this risk. And from our experience, we feel like it will work. And we didn't have, an, you know, I don't remember anybody that we had yeah. that we could turn to. Now, book, we read a lot of books, or I did, um, you know, on some of these issues, and, and it just confirmed that we were going in the right direction. So yeah, that was wonderful. Help us perfect our, our path, too. You know, what yeah. I really love about your message is that, and I, and, and I, and I knew today that uh, having listened to you before that I was hoping that this is exactly what you'd say, is that it applies to all businesses, not just to uh, photography businesses. Uh, that what you just talked about, Tim and Bev, uh, just is exactly what's going on in so many businesses today where people are trying to be everything to everyone and right. failing miserably. Yeah, right. absolutely, and, and it does. The, 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 what the product is actually is not always the, 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 the prime uh, point, but the main issue is uh, how you define it, carve it, make it unique, and rise it to the top. And I think, you know, as human beings, Bob, we, we are people pleasers, and photographers are that way. But in reality, um, when you become that and you do anything and everything, um, it, it really can come back to, to cause you to, to in a, in especially in a soft economy, to not uh, not rise to the top and not do the things you you know you've been dreaming of as a as a business owner and artist. So, so what are some of the crucial things you've done over the last few years with the economy uh, the way it's been? Well, you remember my story of my bulldog. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Rock. We lost him a couple years ago, but I got to tell you. Uh, I, I, one day I want to write a book, and I, it's going to be everything you need to know about life you can learn from a bulldog, uh, because uh, the bulldogs are tenacious, uh, and, and they really are. You know, and Rock had this tug toy, and, and uh, boy, you could you could pull on that thing. He would rather die than let go. You put food in front of him, you know, put food in front of me, I'd drop the tug toy, but you put it in front of him, he he want if he forget it. And I think if you got ever got it away from him, threw it over a cliff. He'd jump, and on his way down, he'd look at you and say, well, maybe I'm going to die, but I got the tug toy. And, and uh, i got to tell you, that tenacity is, is number one uh, thing. Number one thing is, is being tenacious um, and, and not giving up. And I think you hear people that are successful today, as I talk to them, they say, you know, I'm working harder. But, I mean, I'm doing all right, but I'm working harder than I used to. I'm not getting that free ride anymore. And I think, you know, that's, that's, that's number one. I think... Number two is you have to be relevant in today's market, and and uh, we work very hard at messaging uh, what we are because the way you message is different. Social media is now involved, and 
you know, people don't want to deal, no matter what your age, and I, I don't want to really share mine, <laughs> but no matter what your age is, uh, you have to make sure that you remain relevant. So we use the tools of today. We, uh, we're, we're strong in the social media uh, and, and and uh, using uh, technology to, to help message. And the final thing that, uh, that we do is uh, we set aside time to be proactive. We set aside staff time um, every Tuesday morning. We all get together. And I don't care what you do for the Waldens. You're part of our growth. And we sit down and we brainstorm and we dream big. And then we do something my dad used to say. And it's really simple, but it's true. He said, make a plan, work the plan. And uh, after we talk about it, we do all of that, we make a plan, and then we work that plan. So uh, that's, that's very, very important. It sounds simple, but not many people do it in today's market. And so uh, you've got to. And, uh, and I think we're, we're good at doing that part anyway. So what, um, what I, people don't know that you do uh, a lot of really high-end photography, and uh, black and white relationship uh, portraits, you, you invented them as far as I can tell. Uh, I think so. My opinion. They, are, they are just absolutely uh, gorgeous, and people come to you for that. But you've also evolved, and, and I know Beverly has a whole uh, line of, of uh, beautiful uh, painted uh, portraits. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Bev? That's uh, called Bovisage. We named, uh, Tim always says we're brave to name it Bovisage in Kentucky because that really gets pretty <laughs> mispronounced <laughs> most of the time. Um, I asked a, a friend of ours who's uh, French, and I said, how do you pronounce, how would you pronounce it? And she pronounced it in a way that I can't even say, <laughs> but it sure sounded good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, basically what uh, we were doing with Bovisage. Which means beautiful face, by the way. means beautiful face yeah. in French. Uh, is to create a gap, as we've uh, talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, creating gaps, uh, we feel like, is a very important thing to do to separate yourself from the masses. And we also wanted something that was a little bit of a trade-up for clients that we've had for a while. You know, we wanted them to have to stretch a little bit, to have to reach for a product uh, that was a little bit uh, higher in price. And, and more, yeah, and an heirloom. And an heirloom. And also we uh, restricted how many uh, we did, so there was a little bit of a scarcity principle uh, working for us. And um, I had to sit down and learn painter, of course, and that's one reason, too, that we restricted them is my time is very restricted, and I can't take on a whole lot uh, of extra work, and painter is is quite time consuming. It is a it is a hard program to learn, I will say. Uh, I taught myself and then I was smart enough to take some professional lessons in week long schools. And uh it's still a vital part of what we do. It is the uh it's funny that uh we started we started it with one idea and then as all things go, we prototyped it for two years, talked it out put it into the marketplace as a fully mature product with mm -hmm. samples that were matured and priceless that were thought out, and yet the public has its own ideas sometimes, and so we have morphed it a little bit. And it's ending up at this point a little more of a milestone portrait when kids turn five, something like that. We do some different things, but that's how the public is seeing it as, as their uh, piece to keep that forever and ever of when their children turn five before they lose their teeth and get kind of gangly and uh, a little more yeah, awkward it's looking. A, it's a great mix of photograph, uh, photographic skill, technology, as she was mentioning, and then uh, painting on top of that, the actual uh, uh, hand painting, and it creates a piece that we've kind of defined our style, or she has, and uh, it's, uh, it's real, they're beautiful things. We're real proud of them. She's very good at what she does. I, I agree, and, and having been there and seen them uh, early on, I, I found them to be among the most beautiful portraits I've ever seen in my life. So anyone who is ever even thinking about getting a, uh, uh, an heirloom portrait and can get to Lexington, I would say do it. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Bob. Absolutely. 
So um, I, I know that the two of you believe in giving back to the community, too. So uh, tell me a little bit about what you do in that area. Well, I think, you know, life is about serving. It's about service. And great people have a should have a servant's heart. I mean, we, we're so blessed to live the life we live and, and uh, come across the people we come across and do the things we do when you're successful. It's an added blessing, and so one of the things that we do is we connected with uh, with hospice here in Lexington, and they have a uh, they have a pediatric arm called Daniel's Care, and uh, our hearts toward children. I mean, we've raised two, we photographed many, and we're just passionate about children, and and uh, so we realize that a lot of these families that have children with life threatening illnesses and life limiting illnesses. They just, photography was something they couldn't invest their money and their time in, and they, they, they just seemed to be missing some joys that so many other families did. And so uh, about 10 years ago, it's close to 10 years, Bob, we, we uh, went to hospice and we started uh, donating one wall portrait a month to a family of their choice with a child that, that uh, is in the Daniels Care. Daniels Care is, is the local name for it. Most, most hospice would just say the pediatric arm. Uh, but uh, Daniel's Care, and, and we've done this now for 10 years, and uh, we frame it, we put it on the wall, we don't sell anything. And i got to tell you, it's one of the greatest rewards that we've experienced is being able to serve families that uh, are loving their children but battling some really tough times. And um, I believe that uh, it's, it's one of the things when, when we do retire many years from now and down the road, it will be the thing that probably stays with, with us the strongest are, are these wonderful families. Yeah, it's a great story, and it's a, it's a great cause, and, and uh, I salute you for that. So let me ask you uh, one last question. What, what does the future hold? What, what, uh, what kind of plans do you have? Because I know you're always planning. Well, yeah, thank you. We, uh, we're we're going to certainly stay the course with our business here, but um, uh, we, we travel and teach, and we want to add, um, we're building a website, it's not out yet, but uh, it'll be timwalden.com, and we want to start taking our art uh, other cities and places across the country or across the world doing uh, location lifestyle portraits or relationship portraits in the home in different places and offer uh, some of uh, We've been able to travel all over Europe and, and Asia and so forth, so we're going to also offer some of our personal art uh, at timwalden.com, um, you know, somewhere in the near future. Uh, so that will allow us to go places, uh, continue to stay on the road while we manage our studio here. And uh, the thing we want to always do is, as I said earlier, we want to stay relevant. So that keeps us young is seeing what technology has um, and, um, you know, different, you know, how we can how we can fit into it, how we can fit in today's um, 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 society in a relevant way. And then we love teaching photography. We have a coaching community on online, um, TomeandBevWalden.com. That's for photographers. And uh, so we want to grow that and maintain ourselves as educators because we learn a lot and we connect with wonderful people. But, so that's us. Ah, fantastic. Fantastic. And, and I want to thank you for being with us today. I know, Beverly, you're a little under the weather, so uh, thank you for, for being able to show up. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I was worried I would be coughing my way through this, but it's so far. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, too. We're going to uh, put this on uh, my blog, of course, and we'll put it on uh, iTunes, and we'll also uh, give everyone your URLs and put those so that they can click on them and, and uh, come and take a look at some of your gorgeous photography uh, online. So we'll do all that, and uh, because I know right now people listening are saying, well, okay, where do I go to see these photos? So, well, <laughs> so thank you very much. Well, I know this has been about us, but i got to say we appreciate what you're doing uh, for so many people as well. We, uh, we love our friendship with you, so we appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you very much, guys. I do, too. Have a wonderful day. All right. You too. Thank you.